Uh, how you doing, Sultan? Good, Basta. Good, good to be here. Nice. nice to finally be here in person. Yeah, and it's the first time I actually meet you. Yeah. I've met yeah. your wife yeah. um, at the door of Eleven Green. Oh, did she let she, you in? Well, she had to seat us. Okay, <laughs> so, okay, good. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think she was overwhelmed. I think yeah. it was around the beginning when you guys first opened. That was a rough And period. there was like a really big line. And me and my wife were like calming her down. Like, it's all right. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. You know? If, I was hiding in the kitchen back you were, then. You were in the kitchen back then. <laughs> and that's why I told you. I saw your kids running around and, yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, obviously, uh, Sultan, owner of Eleven Green and Thanos at Eight. Yep. Um, previously, uh, a corporate man, corporate uh, monkey, yeah. a corporate monkey <laughs> made the jump to uh, F and B world. <laughs> yeah. So um, I find it personally very fascinating um, to talk about this jump um, because personally I love uh, the F and B industry and uh, I also love uh, burgers. Personally, I love. It. I think all of my friends uh, know me as the Burger Man. Amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I do a lot of like, burgers at home, and I invite a lot of friends to come have burgers. And every every time I want to test out something, I just can get, get them to come over. Uh, so I'm gonna really uh, learn from you, Sensei, and you tell me <laughs> you know, what uh, what I should be doing to kind of like do this. Uh, oh. But yeah, so so tell me about you first of all. I mean, uh, I, for the people who don't know, I, this is the first time we meet. You know, I this is actually. The first time we meet so we chatted uh, a couple of times uh, chatted yeah <laughs> a couple of times to make this make sure this works so shout out to samar for making this uh 100%, for this up. 100%. um yeah so uh you've so, been doing corporate yeah i don't know what you did before so yeah. do tell well i mean it's a 19 year career uh -huh. uh, in corporate what did you do um, uh, what was your... i started as a, a water treatment uh, engineer slash sales account manager for general electric in saudi arabia oh for a year and a half i was carrying a water kit oh. going from petrochemical plant to refinery to gas plant doing all the you know water testing i was a water boy essentially <laughs> okay uh <laughs> testing the you know the i'm a chemical engineer by by background uh -huh. so that kind of made sense let me get into water at uh -huh. the time yeah i did yeah. that for a year and a half i guess that makes sense to you i don't know why that would make it does. Me. <laughs> I mean, look, honestly, for me, uh, the reason why I went into chemical engineering, taking a step back, is because it was the closest thing to cooking. I loved cooking. My yeah, parents that would make sense. wouldn't let me uh -huh. uh, become a chef. You know, they're like, why a chef? You know, you just stay at home and cook for us if you want. But you're not, you know, so you've you're always not, liked to cook. I've always loved to cook. Uh -huh. um, but obviously, you know, culturally at the time, uh, we needed to conform to being a certain way. And, and that's what I did. Um, Where are you from? If I, uh, I'm Syrian, uh -huh. uh, Lebanese. Okay. So I'm actually Syrian, originally Lebanese. Okay. Uh, Interesting. You don't um, see much of those. No, I'm yeah. the opposite. Okay. Uh, and I have both passports, uh, essentially. Well, nice. Uh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Anyways, uh, so that was my first uh, part of my career. Mm -hmm. General Electric for three years, uh, Saudi and then Dubai. Then I got headhunted into Booz Allen Hamilton uh, Consulting. Mm. Today it's called Strategy And. I was ah. with them for five years, consulting on the road, different projects. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of work. Uh, you know, uh, met a lot of great people, learned a lot, um, and mainly on the energy and utility side. So you know that that kind of career. So U.S. company, uh, you know, Fortune 500 to, to to management consulting again. U.S. company finally with Honeywell. My, my last stint for 12 years. 12 years with one company. 12 years in Dubai. Well, I admire your commitment. <laughs> you know, that's good. Yes, I, uh, I, was, uh, I was doing the right thing back then according to what I was taught. Right? So Honeywell, that's the AC company. That's what I know. I don't know anything else except for the AC. That's what the, uh, 100%. That's what most people see. Right. You see the thermostat in the buildings and the offices. You're like Honeywell. But they do a lot more, actually. Okay. So there's a lot uh, behind that company. A technology, great technology company, aerospace and defense, mm. uh, oil and gas. Really? Uh, yes, oil and gas, uh, sensors uh, for productivity solutions. There's a lot. They do a lot, honestly. Okay. Uh, and they're very niche, so they're not asset heavy. Very niche company. They do great. But it's corporate. Mm. At the end of the day, it's super uh, corporate. Yeah, very, I mean everything you've done that you've talked about is absolutely corporate. Super corporate. corporate, yeah. super corporate. And um, y you know, U.S. super corporate, essentially. And uh, at the end, I was like dying. Mm. I mean, I was, I, I, you know, it was, it was just, you know, it was coming out of my skin and my health. I just, I couldn't take it anymore. Dude, really? Wow. Mm. Um, so what, like, what, what kind of health? I mean, 
I mean, I would get these rashes uh, on my skin, and it's they're stress related. They're you know immuno type. Uh, was this issues. towards the end of your? Uh, toward, like, it'll pass, you know, the past four years of, of you know of my last uh, role, Stay. I would say three four years. It was uh, it was pretty tough, uh, and what made it tougher mm. was the fact that I was running a supper club, and we'll talk about that more later. I was running a supper club for five years, which is what I love to do. So here I am doing what I love to do while doing what I've been taught to do at the same time, mm. the conflict, the persona. You mm. know, I'm you know, chief commercial officer running an office with 70 people, uh, you know what I mean, in my organization, and in the evening I'm cooking yeah. three, four times a week. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. 12 people on a table, yeah. and I'm excited, and I'm having fun, I'm exhausted. But all of that conflicting. It's uh, interesting. And then at the end, it was a breaking point. Uh, so, okay, so you, okay, this is interesting. So you had your last stint, or, or, or focus at uh, Honeywell, because that's yeah. where you, that, you got to chief commercial officer, like you're yeah. saying right now. Yeah. So big job, you yeah. know, big job, big responsibility, big money, big everything. Yeah. But at some point, you were like, God, this is not what I want to do. Like, yeah. God, this is killing me. This is eating me up alive, you I know? Mean, I, I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do for a long time. But the, you know, the, the fear mm. and anxiety of making a jump like that after all these years and that track record of successful growth in a career and then having to, well, thinking about making that jump is like, no way. How would I do it? What would people think? What would my family think? You know, and I have responsibilities. You've got three kids, kids yeah. and a dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, so it was it was a lot. Uh, it was a lot to handle. Yeah. I got right? birds, so you, you I, do? Yeah. I, okay. I hear you. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> okay. So uh, so that was uh, that was tough. Um, uh, that was really tough at that time. Um, and then, you know, a few things happened. Uh, and, and sorry, your wife, yeah. um, mm. so so she also, she works, I mean, right? Uh, yes. Because you guys, are you partnering together with Eleven Green or, or well, Thanos? Or, cause, look, cause I, mean, I know that she's involved in some she way. She is, sure. she's involved. She's definitely, I mean, everything sweet and dessert related uh, uh, okay. in Thanos, in Eleven Green That's is her, her brain. So I, I know she, we're jumping the gun here. I just yes. wanted to... Uh, yeah, yeah, so she's involved mm. in pretty much everything. But... She has her own career, mm. so she's not as hands-on as I am. She helps, she supports, right. but her focus is on her career. Got she it. she works for a chemical company okay. here in Dubai. Oh, so you guys are both the same. Similar uh, background okay. again. So uh, she's into baking, but she is chemicals. And uh, I should have done chemical engineering. Yeah, I think, you end up I as a chef. Great. <laughs> That's a great chef, you know? <laughs> that would make sense. Okay, so, okay, fine. So mm. you're doing that. So when did you start doing uh, Thanos, the, the uh, supper club? It was in uh, early 2019 uh, okay. we started, so before COVID. Uh, so walk me through that thought process. Mm. Like how, What happened? Yeah. Okay, this is, a, this is a story that everybody who's been on our table in our supper club has probably heard. Okay. And usually it's Kinda. Mm. Uh, who tells that story. Kinda, your wife. My wife, okay. absolutely. Uh, because I'm just uh, cooking and right. I'm busy. She's you know? a storyteller. She's a storyteller the... and I'm in the kitchen. Mm. She comes in the desserts. Anyway, so she was uh, coming out of uh, our, you know, we, we, de- she, we delivered our third, she delivered our third child. Mm. I, I was involved, but yeah. she delivered our third child. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> um, uh, and she had stopped working for a good period of time, mm. of, uh, a couple of years five years, I think five, six years. She wanted to get back into the corporate world Mm. because she put a pause in her career. We were in the US for a year. We came back. She put a pause in her career for the family and she wanted to go back. Mm. She went through a series of interviews. Funnily enough, um, the one that was most advanced was with Honeywell. Mm. So we were actually pursuing a role in the same company I was in. She got to the final rounds and it was looking great. And she's so excited. Finally, she's going to be able to come back in after all these years. Oh, wow. Okay. And she didn't get it. Oh, damn. Somebody else, you know. So uh, You gave me anxiety just by telling me that <laughs> story. story. <laughs> so I come back home from work at like 8, 8.30 p.m. I had a long day, you know, in, in, in Honeywell. And uh, I walk in. She's crying. She she's got in tears. Mm. You know, I'm like, what happened? She's like, I didn't get it. I'm like, you know, it's okay. God. It doesn't matter. Mm. It's all right. You know what? You love to bake. Why don't you do something in baking and cooking? You know, I hate the corporate world. They own me. I can't yeah. wait. I wish I can cook. Why don't you just take advantage of it's that? Like, what's what's <laughs> yeah, get, don't talk get, to me about baking right now. <laughs> get into baking, whatever. She's like, no, how do we do it? We can't open a bakery. It's too expensive, whatever the risk. We've got kids. 
And then she's like, you know, strolling on her phone at that point, like, you know, let's, it was midweek, but let's, let's have a drink. Uh, so we, you know, took out a Vimto and uh, <laughs> started to drink. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and then, and then basically, uh, w- you know, w- going through her phone on Instagram, she sees one or two supper clubs at a time. You know, wh- how do these guys do it? You know, why can't we do something like this? Mm. You know, at the time there was a few, as I mentioned. And I like, I'm like, yeah, it would be amazing. I could cook, you could bake, but it's, you know, I can't do it. I'm working in Honeywell. It's impossible. It's not going to happen. Anyways, long story short, she takes my phone while I'm in the bathroom. She takes my own account and she writes, you know, this is Sultan, my wife, Kinda. I do the salty. She does the sweet, something very cheesy. This weekend, we're starting a supper club. Oh, nice. Okay. Six people. So she didn't even overthink it. She's like, let's she did just it. do it. She did it. She didn't tell me. I went to sleep. I didn't know it even happened. I wake up in the morning and there's like, you know, 12, 15 messages from people in our circle trying to book. We want to come, you know, and uh, started with six people. Actually, five showed up because a friend of mine had a blind date who ditched him. So it was only five people <laughs> and we ran it, mm-hmm. you know, and it grew, you know, from six people to eight people. To what 10 was your people, first 12 people? What did you cook in that first one? The first one, uh, the, the main course was a lo- lobster alio olio. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love cooking pasta, so it was fresh pasta, alio olio, uh, lobster from the f- fish market, uh, appetizers, it was a salmon crostini, smoked salmon crostini, bruschetta. There was a gazpacho. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a bit warm outside, so it was a you know, cold gazpacho, refreshing. Mm. And... Uh, and there was a croquetta in mm. there, like a Spanish-style uh, croquetta. I mean, okay. Yeah. So, so that was... I then, don't know what most of that means, but okay. And then the dessert... <laughs> take your word for it. <laughs> the, the dessert was a lemon crack pie, uh-huh. uh, which, which Kinda made, which right. was amazing. It's still on our menu. Mm. Tano's at eight, by the way. So okay. it's one of our best sellers. She did that as well then. And we had so much fun. We had so much fun doing it. Okay. What does Tano's at eight mean? Tano, Tano is essentially my my nickname growing up, Sultan Tano. So my, my parents would call me Tano. There was a there was a small flamenco dancing place in Spain. So we go to Spain every year for the past forty years. My family, oh. my my two sisters live there cool. all year round. Um, and uh, there was a flamenco place there, and the dancer was called Tano, and it stuck. My my parents just call me Tano. I don't dance flamenco, by the way. <laughs> okay. I just okay. stuck. And eight, so I assume, is the time at eight p.m. Uh-huh. Initially, it was sat eight because we had eight people on the table. Ah. But then we became 12, so then it became at eight. Mm. So anyways, it is what it is. Okay. It stuck. Cool. Yeah, yeah. it's a cool name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you did Thanos at eight, and then yeah. you're like, shit, man, I love this. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love this. COVID hit. We had to stop for you know a good six months. Mm. In that time, we got called by somebody saying, why don't you come cook in a kitchen? in a central kitchen. So we actually hired a kitchen. We hired staff. We grew the team and we started delivering paellas. I was cooking paellas on fire. So that was one of my specialties. Paellas on wood, on fire. Um, Hold on, wait. You're you're rushing here. You got a kitchen. Yeah. How did you get a kitchen? How did you, like, did you guys, you and your wife, like, yellow, we're going to put some money. We're going to get this kitchen. So this lady is like, look, I have this kitchen. I have space. I see what you guys are doing with the supper club. You know, uh, would you be interested hmm. in expanding and getting into catering to some extent? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you know what? You know, COVID's here. We can't really do the supper club. It's a great time. Let's explore. We go, we see the kitchen. It's like, you know, our first kind of move into the commercial industrial because supper clubs, as you know, it's an underground dining experience right. at the end of the day. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Now we're getting yeah. into sort of licensing and all of that. Right. Anyways, we explore it. We do it. Because it's amongst friends, so you, you exactly. can't... Exactly. Uh, okay. it, it's already fitted out, so there's no CapEx. We just walk in with our team and start cooking. And in the beginning, it was just me and Kinda in that kitchen. Right. Big kitchen, really big kitchen. Mm. So I was making paellas, and she was making her desserts, cool. and we start hiring people, and cool. that's, yeah. Very cool. Okay, mm. so so you, you're you doing these paellas. Yeah. Everybody's, like, raving. These are amazing yeah. paellas and stuff like that. So how, did you start yeah. seeing traction online? People starting to order, like... A hundred percent. It it grew organically uh, within the supper club community that we built. We had a brand name uh, and, and people wanted to experience our food. And 
and then uh, paella, huh? Like that's so interesting. So that's your thing. You do paella. That's your. That's one of uh, one of the things that. Sultan's be, known be, for beyond the supper club. Yes, mm. yes, events, all of that. Actually, yeah. I've heard that about you. Uh, you yeah, because when I asked about Thanos at eight, yeah, somebody told me, yeah, they are known for paellas. Yeah, Spanish. You know, it's yeah, a Spanish essentially uh, focused. But I do sp- Spanish and uh, Italian and French as okay. well, and like Syrian, old school Syrian Lebanese cooking. Really, as oh, well, like gra- grandma okay. style, like uh, what I know and oh, all that. Amazing. I like to do that as well. I love There's you, a man. grandma like, inside of me. Somehow. I want to like hang out with you all the time. <laughs> okay, uh, so so you're doing this, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, yeah, I'm very interested in your story. That's why I'm like walking you through it. Mm. Um, and so it starts picking up, and yeah. you get orders and stuff like that. You are still at uh, Honeywell at yes. that point, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So and walk I'm me. trying, and I'm trying to like somehow keep a low profile because. You know, there's this thing where I want to keep these two lives separate, separate like this yeah. schizophrenia, yeah. you know, kind of separate. Right. You know, I don't want them to meet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. Because uh, that's how I'm feeling, you know, like, uh, you know, yeah. keep them aside. I love this and I have to do this, but just don't meet. Right. Yeah. Uh, eventually we, we grew to the yeah, extent. You're t- completely two different personalities. Exactly. You're running like this corporate, like you're yeah. wearing a suit. And oh, you're my like, God. Like, no, don't remind me about the suit. I'm wearing shorts today. <laughs> yeah, you're wearing you know? shorts today. <laughs> I can't wear uh, You know, the p you know, and then then at night you're going like, ah, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> like just yeah. kind of sitting there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because you're working with your hands and your yeah. your mind is totally focused on it. You're and present. Like, you're absolutely present. It's like a meditative state. Dude, absolutely. Ah, yeah. uh, keep going. Keep yeah. going. <laughs> this is so so interesting. that's the state that I want to be in all the time, yeah. right? And I and, anyways, um, so doing that during the day, doing this at night, the delivery, the catering, we grow and people hear about us and and it keeps growing. To the point where we'd launch dates for the supper club uh, for uh, two months in advance, and they would get booked Damn. in thirty minutes, two months in advance, oh. all booked, done, right? So people wanted to experience. There weren't many supper clubs, and you would charge, time. and right, so. we would charge, and obviously it was uh, it was a great offering because the charge wasn't representative of you know, the quality of ingredients that I was using because I had, it was in my home. I wasn't mm. paying rent. Mm. So the business case for it was amazing. You okay. know what I mean? And, and you guys, or did you live in a villa? I'm assuming We a lived villa. in a villa okay. in El Manara. And it was really about having fun, less uh, about making money. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Because we had our careers. This mm. is about expressing ourselves and connecting with people. Absolutely, yeah. The joy in that is incredible. So a lot of random people started coming over. You don't know many them. Many stories. Yeah, many stories. Amazing. It, it gets, okay. yeah, a lot, so, of, a lot of fun. That's so cool. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, people started to hear in my office. You know what I mean? And really? like, oh, what is this? What are you doing? And I'm like, you know, uh, chief commercial officer, director of strategy, whatever the <laughs> roles that I've had. You know, yeah, I'm like, yeah. yeah, it's my passion. What is it? How come? What's going on? You yeah. know, like I'm like, well, this, that, and then some people from from you know my career would we'll come be on join. my table, right. and I'm like, you know, I was in the morning presenting to them in an executive presentation yeah. as a CCO, and then here I am cooking in the evening. It, it, it got weird. <laughs> it got weird. It got weird. It got yeah. weird. Okay. Um, but it was fun. It okay. was fun, obviously, and um, and uh, that lasted for a good, you know, five years. Right. Okay. Oh, five years. Okay. Mm. So there was at some point you, you obviously, okay, so this is interesting because I feel like people who do burgers are different from people who cook, you know, mm. like uh, people who cook have the, it's almost like, um, you know, like a musician, you know, who... Uh, plays really advanced guitar, you know? Yeah. But he yeah, chose yeah. to strum the acoustic and do a burger, you know? Yeah, so yeah. why the uh, yeah. why the pivot towards making burgers? It uh, was an accident. Okay. So it was a pure accident. Okay. What happened was... So you don't uh, have a history of burgers. You were no, just like, no, fuck, I want to try burgers. Not at all. I, my burgers back then, well, I, I'll go to Prime Gourmet, pick up what they had in, in the fridge and just stick it on a grill. I mean, yeah. that's what I did. I mean, shout out to Prime Gourmet, you know? 100%. Great, great 100%. patties, you know? Uh, if you want to so, sponsor this podcast, it's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one day, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Eleven Green could too, hopefully. Yeah, 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 hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Fingers yeah, crossed. Got the yeah, I got the here. green lights and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just Thank buying you. you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> it's a pitch, by the way. This is <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, what happened was it was Ramadan in uh, 2022, mm. and uh, there was an announcement by a food incubator in in Dubai, Casino del Sol. Uh, announcing that there is going to be a burger competition in uh, in Dubai uh, to see best burger, mm. uh, um, 
And uh, I looked at Kinda. I'm like, it's you know, we're not doing any supper clubs. It's Ramadan. I don't like to do supper clubs in Ramadan. I, mm. you know, I do my thing. I fast, family, whatever, all of that. I don't yeah. want to, you know, do anything else. Yeah. So although it feels like very right for supper clubs, it Ramadan. does. It does, and we do some things like around iftars, mm. but from the kitchen. Yeah. Because ah, okay. it, so you me, deliver and, yeah, okay. for me, like I, it's sacred to be at home mm. or iftar to be at peace. Like it's also another spiritual thing for me as right, well. Right, I get it. Yeah. Anyway, so but there's a burger competition, so I'm like, I'm bored, you know. And this is like a couple of days, mm. and it's you know burgers. And she's like, yeah, but Sultan, you you don't do burgers. I'm like, I know, but I just want to have fun. I don't care if I win or lose, or it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I, look, the guys who are in, you know, are like you know, barbecue guys and burger guys, and that's what they do, you know, like yourself. They love that, you mm. know, that, that's, that's their thing. I don't care. I just want to have fun, mm. and I want to learn. Right. Then I, you know, and she's like, oh, whatever, do whatever you want. I submitted, you know, got in. You submitted thing. as Thanos, or did you as have to Sultan come up? Shatila. Oh, okay, so it's individual. Individual, uh, yeah, yeah, Sultan okay. Shatila, nothing to do with Thanos. Okay. And, uh, and, you know, I started to get into the science of burgers, the meat, the buns, the sauces, and I went deep, and cool. you know, yeah. and uh, experimenting, trying on Kinda, and she had a lot of burgers during that period, a lot, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and other family members, a lot too. of iftars with burgers uh, or, or sahur as well, yeah. sahur exactly, and uh, and you know that competition took place, and you know I I won the first round, uh, uh, second round, semifinals. I was like. Uh, you know, th- you know, second or third, and then went into the finals, and I didn't expect it. Um, the funny thing is, the night before the finals, and this is a very crazy story, and it, it goes back to manifesting and manifestations, and I kind of believe in that somehow. Mm. Uh, I dreamt that I won the next day. Okay. Nobody knows that, right? I, I had a dream that I won, and I saw it. Like, I saw everything. Mm. And the next day, it played out pretty much exact to what I had dreamt. It's it's really wow. crazy uh, okay. how those things happen, uh, I think. Um, but um, unexpected. And here I was, you know, holding a golden ticket, you know, with uh, incredible chefs like uh, Chef Orfali and Chef Reef uh, and Othman and, and, and others who were involved in the competition. Yeah. Uh, you know, guiding us and advising us. And I owe a lot to Chef Orfari, actually, because mm. he, you know, he, he, he was, you know, his feedback during the competition at the testing stages work was critical to how I developed uh, everything that I did. Uh, so was that the bullfrog burger? Uh, without the frog. Bull, Just the bull, bull. bull burger. Yeah, <laughs> Just, bullfrog. Not, I mean, no frog frogs. makes sense. Yeah. It's, yeah. Green. Yeah, it's green. <laughs> so was that your, that's the one you were competing on? That's the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, so that was, but it, it evolved. Mm. So the bull burger in the first round was different. Mm. The bull burger in the semifinal was different to the bull burger in the final. So you want, this, this was a fine, this is a local competition and then yes. you had to go somewhere, right, to compete. And then because I won, I, I earned the golden ticket. Uh-huh. The golden ticket to, uh, pass into the World Food Championships mm. in Dallas, Texas. Okay. So imagine this. This is around May. Huh? That's coming in November. And I won. And I'm November, I'm going to Texas to compete. In World, but I'm still a chief commercial officer <laughs> yeah. in Honeywell. <laughs> so wild. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like here and you are, like becoming Batman. You know, exactly. You're Bruce Wayne in the day. You know, exactly. And you're going. Exactly. And like, I'm going to the office and the whole time, like, you know, applying for a U.S. visa. Yeah. And, I'm trying hey, Sultan, to... how was your weekend? Yeah, yeah, exa- not much. <laughs> <laughs> not much happened, really. I'm just a world champion of burgers. Yeah, exactly. How about you guys? <laughs> how was your weekend? Okay. So, so that was uh, that was fun as well. I mean, Texas was an experience. What an experience it was. So you got your visa, and then you flew to the U.S.? I went to the U.S. Kinda, my wife came with me, uh, and then Tare and Ola from Casino Sol were there as well. Uh, and What's Casino Sol? Casino del Sol, the food incubator oh, that I mentioned. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, they yeah. do events and, and right, right, like okay. In FMB, okay. So, so they were leading this whole competition. And, yes, okay. they were organizing it essentially, and and then the World Food Championship is a global kind of conference thing that happens. Yeah. Um, Did you have like a UAE? You know. 
、we、were representing the UAE, and、okay. there was a team representing Switzerland, Japan.、Uh, it's crazy, the Japanese team. Dude, I feel like we、yeah. should move, do a movie about this. Honestly, <laughs> just that that experience would be hilarious. Because the Japanese team had. Cameramen and news crews、wow. from Japan、Damn. surrounding them, and we were looking at them like, "Why didn't we do this as a UAE? Because this is, you know, this is special. This is cool. Yeah, yeah. You know what、and、I mean? And you won. It was just nuts. Well, I, I came I, third. Oh, you came third. I came okay, third. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay, I came、okay. third. I yeah. I mean, I, I mean, came, stiff competition. It was your first time. So thirty competitors. Thirty competitors. I didn't. I I thought if I make the top ten. Yeah. I mean, go, imagine flying there. You know, I'm like, I'm going to have fun again. Yeah. Yeah. It goes back to. Yeah, just doing it for fun. Yeah, you know, zero fear of failure.、Mm. That that's critical. Don't fear failure because you fail, you'll get up, you'll do something else. It's fine. You or you'll do it again.、Mm. You learn from your mistakes, right?、Yeah. But I wasn't afraid of failing,、mm. both in Dubai and in the U.S.、Yeah, it's one of these. Like I don't care. I'm、yeah. not. I want to have fun. I want to learn, and I want to experience this fully. Yeah. And. That's what got me to where I got essentially. So you got、yeah. there, you know. You see all these competitors. Yeah, it's like dodgeball, but every it's but burgers and I mean, they, the Japanese team was mincing, grinding their meat live、Damn. on stage with a samurai sword. Essentially, they won. Did they win? No. Oh. They didn't. They Were came, they、uh, eighth or ninth? Oh, okay, fine. So your samurai, <laughs> you can keep your samurai <laughs>、exactly. sword. You know, you got you got <laughs> third. Exactly,、okay. exactly. But what did you、cool. use? <laughs> But imagine how intimidating it was. Like a mach- like machete. These, what did you guys <laughs> like? You know, like grinding the meat. And I'm like,、um, I ground my meat before I came. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> should I have? You know, I bought it from you know Waitrose next to- <laughs> Costco. <laughs> Costco, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> No, that didn't happen. But yeah,、uh, but that was、uh, you know getting there. Yeah,、uh, logistically, how would that work? Like how? Like where, didn't, didn't do you have、meat. to get your own meat, or did we, you? We, we didn't have anything. Okay, we went in. The only thing I brought with me was my buns. Okay, not、uh, like my. How did you check that in the, the, the airport? Bread, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> like, why do you have so many? By you、so、going to sell the, buns? The immigration officer. Yeah, and remember, I'm like Lebanese. You know, born in Damascus. Yeah, bringing buns into bringing the U.S. bringing buns into the U.S. The guy is like, "What are you? What are you doing? What、yeah. What is this?" I'm like, "It's、uh, buns, bread." <laughs> yeah, I can、He's、see like, that. Why? <laughs> I'm like, my wife and I brought them in because we like them. And then he looks at us, and the minute I said my wife and I, he looked at her. He was like, "Okay, fine, you can go ahead." So I guess my conclusion was, if you're married and you're bringing buns into the U.S., it's okay. Okay, well,、That's、good to know. I think. Okay, I mean,、yeah. if you are ever to do that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so get yeah, but, married. <laughs> but that's all we had. The only way you can bring buns into the U.S. <laughs> Is having a wife exactly? <laughs> yeah, get married. Then you're okay. That's the public service announcement. Exactly. Okay. So、um, you bought in your buns,、um, and you knew that the rest of the ingredients you had to buy from there. Is that what you had to do? We, well, the first thing is we had to find the meat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so before going in,、mm. we had you know researched a bunch of ranches,、okay. cattle ranches, okay,、uh, in Texas, and we drove you know、um, an hour and a half and two hours different directions to these ranches in the middle of nowhere in Texas.、Mm. And looking at meat and cows,、nice. cool. And then we found the cow that we liked, and you like, know, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> and、uh, we took care of her, <laughs> and uh, and, and then she,、yeah. she, she, she gave you third place, which is good. Exactly. Okay. She didn't die in vain. No. <laughs> okay. No, no. Got, so you chose the cow. Good, you、yeah. you slaughtered the cow. So、um, and then what? You get? Do you, did did they tell you you got to get X amount of kgs to the competition or? Well, you needed to make a, a six burgers, a fi- five burgers,、um, and then we do one extra.、So、Because the、six. one in Dubai, you had to like serve the entire population. Modla, I mean the people who were there. Because I ate, I was there. You know, I ate. In the in, burgers, yeah, absolutely in in the final in Dubai, we served the judges first. Yeah,、um, five or six burgers, and then and then we had to go back in the kitchen. And then do for the rest of the、and、people, do right? Do for everybody、yeah. there, right?、Uh, yeah. The three of us, the, the finalists, right, right, right.、Uh, yeah, back then, yeah. Okay. Which was、uh, intense. Cool. So now you just have to do six. You don't have to do like no, no, thirty, forty、no. burgers.、It. Okay. Six、cool. burgers, yeah. Okay. So、mm. that's it. Boom. Then, 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 like, and then you start like you airboxing you and your wife, like you're just getting in the mood. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And and. My wife doesn't chop onions, but、okay. you know, I mean, <laughs> not, not, not that well. And, okay, got it. And、We've、she got twenty minutes. <laughs> she doesn't.、Uh, she doesn't really. I mean, it's not her thing, chopping, right? And on the day of the competition, something happened. The knife, the knife was just 
cutting perfectly. Oh. I've never seen her cut onions the way that she did that day. It's like, the, it's like the, some the spirit of the burgers. Where spirit of the burger, her, yeah. the energy. Uh, she saw that samurai sword. Yeah. It's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> like, <am> I, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to. Okay. Exactly. So that happened and we came and it was, you know, it was a great achievement. Obviously, very happy. But then at that moment was when I was like, you know what? I mean, why do I need to continue to do what I'm doing? I feel like, you know, I can make a jump. I feel like it's time for me to take that risk with three kids, with all the responsibility, everything. After that, I came back and I'm like, I'm not happy. I don't want to, I had so much fun doing this. I'm going to try. If it doesn't work, I'll go back mm. if I need to. You knew, you knew at that point it was burgers. I, uh, well, I knew at that point I'm going to make the jump. Okay. Not, not just burgers. I knew I was going to make the jump. Mm. Is it, you know, a, a Mediterranean restaurant, a Spanish restaurant? Okay. Is it okay, okay. burgers? Is it a cafe and a bakery? Because my wife bakes. Whatever it is. I wanted Gotta to be food. move into FMB. You know, that, that was it. Mm. And um, I, I still remember. I mean, I, I, I uh, obviously, you know, I, at that point I met, you know, Samir. We had chats mm. because, you know, I needed advice. Oh, so advice. you didn't know Samir from before? We knew each other. Okay. Okay. Uh, we knew so each Samir, other. for the people who don't know, uh, founder of uh, uh, Akibadori, uh, Emmy Squared here. Uh, he, he obviously was in Citadel, hospitality. Citadel, Stereo Arcade, Stereo, Republic. Yeah. So he's got, yeah, you know, a good 15, 20 years of experience, right, right. in in uh, in hospitality yeah. and F&B. So he's going to be here next week on the podcast. He is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So we can maybe... Can, can he oh, have the... Oh, let's pick, pick up, up for the kids. kids. Oh, but I'm not picking them up. So <laughs> okay. My wife is, so it's, it's good. <laughs> or they can stay and wait until we're done with this podcast. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah. So essentially, you know, we we reconnected because we knew each other. We reconnected, and my story and you know, all the conversations, and you know, he kind of he really helped me in terms of opening my eyes into, you know, how to do things, the process, you know, looking for locations, um, you know, pushing me and helping me to actually make the decision of resigning. Mm. And I still remember I was sitting, uh, you know, I left the office. I knew I was going to do it on that day. It was January 23rd, uh, 2022, uh, 2023, sorry, mm. January 20, 23rd, 2023. I was sitting in Orfali mm. there. And you knew the guy, oh, obviously, because he judged your burger. So yeah, he, exactly. Okay. So I was sitting there having a lunch um, with uh, my cousin who lives in Abu Dhabi. And um, I had written the, uh, the letter of resignation and just eating, having a burger, having, you know, the itch and, and all the stuff that I love there. And I was like, you know, no. sent. Did, did you do it? Did you didn't even talk oh, yeah. to your boss? You just sent it? Sent it. No, I didn't talk to my boss. I sent it. Uh, the boss was, you know, part of the reason that I was like, I'm done with corporate because it was one of those scenarios of like, I just can't. You know, it was just, you know, bad chemistry, horrible energy, you know, horrible bosses kind of situation. And I hated, you know, that situation. But in hindsight, I actually am grateful mm. for having, uh, you know, that kind of boss at the end of my career to help push me oh over God. the edge. <laughs> it happened at the right time. I don't know if that's the credentials he wants. But it's, it's, like, it's amazing. Like, you know, wait, uh, what? So you left your career because of me? I'm <laughs> grateful to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that, that, that did happen. Uh, okay. So, so, yeah. so, uh, so you sent it yeah. and boom, it's out there. It's out. Okay. And then were they like, what the fuck? Or were they like, well, I, I think the, the writing was on the wall as mm -hmm. well within, within, within the company because, you know, I just came back from, you know, World Food Championship, you right? Know, as as a you know, as silver, a a bronze medalist, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is, as a champion, and uh, won the UAE Supper Club for five years. Everybody knows at that point, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was done. You know what I mean? Like it was uh, kind of expected. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. Yeah. So, so at that point, did you know it was burgers, or I made a decision to get into burgers mm -hmm. uh, initially because I was like. It's the easiest thing to, not easiest, it's like simplest, simplest, I guess. Simplest in terms of, because I knew I wanted to have a small menu. Mm. I wanted to control the operation. Quality is the most important thing for me. I'm, I'm a freak when it comes to quality control, mm. right? So I wanted to keep that simple and, and easy to manage in the beginning. Right. And also allows me to scale a bit. Mm. At the end of the day, I, I wanted to build a brand. Mm. That, that, that's key for me. It's, right. it's, 
less about the money, more about building a legacy, a brand, something that would that would stand the test of time. Right. right. Yeah. And um, that's what Eleven Green is for me, essentially. Okay. So you decided it's burgers. Yeah. Uh, you sent a resignation. Yeah. It's out there. It's, out it's there. Done, done. Done. And you're like, let's go. Yes. Let's build. And there is a relief there. I mean, mm. I was so relieved that it was out there. It was wow. done. Okay. I was scared. Mm. You know, the, 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 you're scared because of course, yeah. You don't know what's gonna happen. You're Once gonna, you make the decision. Lo- yeah. And then uh, you you launch day one. Is it on time? The, the investment, all of that, and then is it gonna work? You know, and I left everything for it. You know what I mean? It takes a lot of guts. So operationally, you did you did you raised money? You raised money to open no. this restaurant? No, no, oh, okay. It so. was uh, it was all savings essentially. Which is all savings. Yeah. So is it just you? Do you? Because um, I know Samir is a partner of yours. So Samir right? is a partner as well okay. of mine. Yeah. So you have a couple of partners. You all No, no. It's just me and Samir. Just you and Samir. But okay. Predominantly, it's my investment. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, right? It was my savings. I took the risk, right? Essentially. Man. And, uh, you know, if I didn't have Samir, I wouldn't have made the decisions I made in the right way or made the connections. Yeah. So, you know, the, the the risk of failure is reduced when you have somebody like that right, by your yeah. side. Uh, but, but operationally, I, but it might take, like, experience on a kitchen, right? Uh, so, it, it, look. And, did you and hire someone who knows no, this? No, 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 no. It was just me. I okay. was running the kitchen, and the first three months, I was the chef in the kitchen. Mm. I was the chef in the kitchen for three months. I didn't leave the kitchen. Mm. I mean, I have, you know, videos of that period where I'm, you know, it's not me. I'm a different human being. Like, it's, you know, Gordon Ramsay on steroids. I was, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it got bad, right? But that's what you need to do in the kitchen in, initially uh, mm. to kind of find your flow. Mm. Because there's no one way to run any kitchen in mm. F&B. And you, you'll hear that from many others. It's you find your flow mm. in the kitchen and in the restaurant as right. well, front of house as well. Right. Um, so there's Thanks. no reason to bring anybody. You just have to find your way, mm. essentially. So but was it like packed, packed from the beginning? beginning? And why was it packed from the beginning? I, that was a mystery to me. Why, why was it? I, I guess, guess the, the, the Burger award, award played a big role in that. But, uh, Look, day one, uh, we didn't announce that we opened. Mm. People were aware that something's happening, but mm. we didn't announce. So day one, I was literally sitting in a restaurant by myself, messaging uh, uh, Kinda, my wife, saying, I'm here, we opened, but there's nobody here. What, sh- what should I do? She's like, did you announce that you're open? I'm like, no. She's like, how are they going to know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, good point, you know? <laughs> And then, you know, I made a post, Samar made a post, and it kind of went viral. And people knew that the winner of Dubai third was opening 11 Green X Town. So this story was known, but yeah. when is it opening? They're waiting. Uh-huh. The minute the word got round, uh, people started coming. Right. And um, but then it got crazy. Got huh? crazy. Lines, right? Lines, yeah. lines, lines. Um, that's amazing. Uh, like, that's what any restaurant owner wants. It was amazing. It was honestly, I, I don't. I don't know how it all happened. Yeah, that's uh, nuts, man. It just happened. Yeah, uh, that is amazing. Uh, yeah. So how did you feel like when that was? You're looking at your restaurant. It's packed. There's a line outside the door. I mean, and like grateful oh, is is probably yeah. the first word that comes to mind. But then also uh, scared, mm. scared because nervous, scared because I want to make sure that whatever comes out there is to my standard is. You know, and you know, in an operation like that, you're gonna have ups and downs. There's mm. gonna be mistakes, right? And it's about what you do after that. But right. but but it was, uh, I mean, it was probably one of the most intense periods of my life. Mm. Uh, that period, yeah. from a career perspective, even mm. that period That's in F and B, more yeah. than anything I've ever done before. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I I wouldn't sleep. I would, you know. But you were happy, right? I mean, I was super happy. And there's but a I sense of purpose. I was super stressed. I was super happy, super stressed, purpose, passion. You know, I'm, I'm in the. It was amazing. But overall. I guess it's, it's a startup. I mean, every startup has that period, you know, stress yeah. and yeah. that comes along with it. Mm. I'm just on the, I'm just exiting my, you know, startup experience, um, and it is so much stress around with it. But I think one thing with building a company or you know a restaurant is you are guided by your sense of purpose, and that sense of purpose will always put things in perspective for you. So no matter how much stress you have, you're not in the corporate environment that you were in before. So you're not, your soul is not being sucked into something you hate. 100%. But you're doing something that you absolutely love. So it's all worth it at some point, right? 100%. Yeah. You're, you feel alive. 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, and I guess cooking as well. I mean, the 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 amount of therapy that it gives, you know, to a person because you're like you said. I think it was so perfect what you said. You're absolutely present. Yeah. In the moment. Yeah. Because you yeah. gotta be. You yeah. Know, you gotta be super. Yeah, yeah. And you're doing something. something. You're working with your own hands. Yeah. I guess there's something evolutionary about yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. you're actually working with your hands. And, you know, that must be something that's. Hundred uh, percent. That's exciting. 100%. And, uh, and yeah, and, and for me, 11 Green is the stepping stone. I mean, I'm looking forward to, to, to new things. I'm working on a couple of things as well with time. But, you know, the key is not to rush anything at the end right. of the day, right? So, yeah. So, 11 Green. So, Tano's, are you still doing that as well? Tano's is still uh, up and running, f- uh, focusing a lot more on the dessert side and, tr- you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, building on that in terms of menu and, and things. But, but no, no supper, supper clubs? Uh, supper clubs, no. You're not doing that anymore. No. So. Okay. Um, I loved supper clubs. Um, and You're too consumed now, I think. I don't have time, yeah. one. And secondly, I feel like that was a chapter in in my uh, evolution, in my career, uh, both for myself and for Kinda, that we've passed now mm-hmm. and time to kind of do other things. You right. know what I mean? But I love it. I mean, I loved, I loved the, the experience of that. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I can ask. How old were you when you made that jump? Like in 2023, how old were you when you took that decision? In 2023? Yeah. Uh, I was uh, 40, um, 43, 42, 42. 42. Yeah. It's good. So it's never too late. No, it's never too late. I'm 43 years old now, uh, going on 44. It's never too late. I just turned 40. Yeah. A bunch of 40 year olds talking about, you know. 100%. You just have to. You just have to start. Mm. You just have to do. Mm. And then uh, have the grit to continue right. through the ups and downs. Grit, that's, mm. that's an important one. Because it's. I, th- the, I think the most important characteristic in all of this is grit. Mm. Days that I'm tired, I'm exhausted. And I don't know why I'm doing this. Why mm. am I doing the supper club? Right. I don't know why. Mm. But I'm doing it because I love it. Right. And I'm present. And through the ups and downs... Kinda would go to bed sometime, but you're crazy. How are you doing this? Mm. Fourth time in a week, right. running a job, kids, everything, and I'm doing it, and I will not give up. The love that for it. is grit. Yeah, love and grit combined. Absolutely. Passion and grit. Absolutely. Passion and grit. Absolutely. And you fail, doesn't matter. Keep going. Yeah. Then you 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 can do anything. Age is just a number. That's awesome. Mm. Uh, w- so, so beyond, beyond your burger. Mm. Uh, what other burgers you like? I don't know if you can say. I know you're, yeah, you're no, your look, competition. Uh, no, hundred percent. <laughs> look, I mean, uh, Hamad knows this. I, 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 I loved High Joint. My house was right opposite High Joints mm. in Al Manara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the OG know, one. Yeah, the OG yeah. one, and that was my burger back then. You know, mm. I, went, I felt like a burger with the kids. I would go to uh, to, to High Joint. Yeah. I felt like a chicken burger. I would go to Pickle. Mm. Uh, you know, back mm. then. Um, uh, I'm saying back then because. I don't eat that many burgers now because most of the burgers I eat are my burgers through the testing because I have yeah, to. Yeah. And at the same time, I, well, you eat so, a lot of burgers. There's so many burgers. <laughs> yeah. There's only so many burgers you can eat in yeah, a week. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but I love Orfali's had burger. Burger. Yeah. Uh, they had a great. They have Orfali's a great burger. Yeah. burger is for me. Phenomenal. And they're not smashed, right? They're not a smashed burger. Um, they're not smashed. No. Yeah, they're not. It's smashed. a it's a thick burger. Yeah. Probably there's a little bit of pressing uh, yeah. uh, that goes on. You prefer uh, smashed. I, I don't though, right? consider Yours is smashed. I, it's not smashed either because we don't go super super thin, thin no. uh, on the burger. I like to keep a certain thickness, level mm. of thickness. So for us, it's an art. It's we press it. Mm. We don't go, ah, you know. Okay, we okay. press it gently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we get the Maillard effect, get the sear, mm. uh, which for me is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but then retain the juices. What you about know? open flame burgers? Do you like those? I or? love those. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It's a different flavor profile. Different, yeah. You know, grilling and and burgers like that. They're amazing. Uh, yeah. but different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, both are great. You know. I mean, I like. I don't know. This might you might not like this, but um, I like Nusrat's burger. Mm. I really do. Um, yeah. I know they're very different from the smashed. Yeah. Uh, but there's something about the, something the about char, the, the barbecue, the yeah. s- smokiness. Yeah, the smokiness. Smokiness of it. Yeah. Also, there's something about the lack of sauce. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't put sauce in it, right? They just put they put like a great cheese. Yeah. Yeah. And they put that 
you know, beef bacon with it. Yeah. And it's juicy as it's, hell. It's, the fat is the sauce. The fat is the sauce. The fat and, and I'm the like, cheese, oh my know? God, this tastes yeah, like yeah, heaven, yeah, you know? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. so good. Yeah. Now, obviously, there's a very different burger from the one uh, yeah. that, you know, high joint yourself, yeah. Uh, yeah. everybody else does. Yeah. Um, but those are interesting, like, different burgers. There's also ones that I don't like at all. Uh, <laughs> I could say. Yeah. I, mean, I don't like Shake Shack, for example. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel it's too heavy, although it's small, but it's too heavy. Yeah, um, it feels it feels heavy uh, after you eat it. Yeah, uh, one of the things that we pride ourselves in in Eleven Green is that you eat a burger, and you know we've had somebody really high up in Dubai government mm. saying, you know, I eat the burgers, and then two hours later I'm in uh, Al Qudra mm. cycling. Oh yeah, feeling like uh, you're making nothing, me hungry, right? Yeah, so we can go right <laughs> after here. You I feel like yeah. I'm gonna tell my because uh, I, I we're planning what to do tonight. Yeah. Maybe I would come to your restaurant. So uh, easy to digest. Why? Because ingredients are super fresh. I mean, yeah. we we don't we don't have a freezer in our kitchen. Do you use a potato bun as well, or we have uh, two types of buns: potato and milk bun. Okay, both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I love brioche buns. Mm. You know, I like that sweetness that I it like brings to, uh, I like brioche. to but buttery <laughs> sweet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm getting hungry now. I, I'm very I, yeah, <laughs> but I'm sure you're like all burgered out. Like you know, at some point, you're like I'm I'm good. Uh, your fries is uh, are amazing. Yeah, like your fries yeah. are like next level they, good. They are. You know? They are my. They are my. They were my nightmare. Really? Yeah, they're the biggest challenge ever. Okay. Because I refuse to bring frozen fries. Mm. I want to have my own Your fresh fries. Fresh fries. Mm. And there is a kitchen in the back, not in the Lemon Green location, another location, Central Kitchen, mm. where we prep all our potatoes, all okay. our fries. There are three guys. I call them my potato guys. Mm. All they do is potatoes mm. around the clock. Imagine. Uh, okay. And, and they're... That's it. That's their life. Potato guys. What? You know, it's like a new position in the yeah. F&B world. Yeah, potato guys. Potato guys. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the process, the, the timing and when to do it, you know, how to, you know, how, mu how much time you put it in the water, you know, how to cook it, steam it, all of that, uh, boil it, fry it, etc. To get that all right yeah. and synced in a way that makes sense for the operation, mm. See, a lot of what we do in 11 Green is about supply and demand, kind of right. forecasting, because right. it's through that that I can enhance freshness right. and quality. I mean, it's so good. Mm. I ordered it like I I get a fries like I get an order of fries and then I finish it so quickly and I, I look at my wife's fries and you know my wife's very healthy and stuff and I'm like uh, so you're gonna finish that she's like no I'm gonna finish my fries. get your own fries <laughs> okay good all right let's get another fries you know no but mashallah honestly it's amazing Thank you. you like everything on the menu honestly it's it's great and it's one of those places where I completely like recommend it you know I'm like yeah it's amazing it's light it's good it's fresh it's uh, their fries is next level it's amazing. Um, honestly, well done. Your story is, that's why I called you sensei in the beginning, because honestly, it is a very inspiring story. Um, I see a lot of parallels like between us. I mean, I, ha I don't have a restaurant or anything, but uh, you could. But the, yeah. the the passion of that yeah. is is there. I'm not, I don't, I wouldn't say like an amazing, I'm not uh, anywhere near that. But for my 40th birthday, my wife was like, what do you want to do for your 40th birthday? And I said, you know what I would love to do? I would like to uh, rent a kitchen. Like, uh, I think the, what's it called? Uh, Top Chef? Yeah. yeah. So I Top told her, chef. I want to rent Top Chef, and I want to invite all of my friends, and I want to pretend that I own a restaurant. And she's like, all right, let's do it. And so we did that, and we invited like 30 or 40 of our friends. Um, they sat outside, and everybody who would come into the kitchen, I'm like, no, I'm the chef. You know, yeah. Everybody yeah. get out. Yeah. You know, I want to do, I want to do this. And just the experience was amazing. Just sitting there, like, cutting it up and like ordering the guys around like what to do like hey, you do this I'll press the burger more and stuff like that yeah. it was amazing you know yeah, and just yeah. seeing my burgers being put on uh, trays and go out and serving people it's amazing there was a the sense feeling. Of, yeah it was amazing it's I was so like, satisfying it's so satisfying yeah. and I was like this is absolutely like what an amazing yeah, feeling yeah, 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 I had yeah, at yeah, that yeah. time so yeah, completely relate to your story yeah. and what you've done and I you know you're obviously four three years advanced in the, in this journey but uh, well done amazing thank you. and thank and you so much I can't wait to try you know it's 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 not your hat is it no no it's not for, mo for the longest time I'm looking it's the 11 it's green, green on it it's green it's the same green that you use though same green, same <laughs> that's, green. What that's what why I, I bought the cap yeah. okay maybe last question why 11 green why why'd you call it so uh, everybody asks that question essentially look 
11 is my lucky number. I, I play football. My jerseys are always 11. Okay. Um, but also, the, the, the first shop that we rented in Mayan Mall mm -hmm. turned out to be shop number 11 in oh. Mayan Mall, in, okay. the, in the master plan. Um, we signed the contract mm -hmm. on January 11th, 2023. Okay. Everything pointed towards 11. I needed to have 11 in, in, in the name. Okay. Uh, green, I love the color, okay. but it's also symbolic to uh, a new beginning, mm. a fresh start. Nice, and uh, it, that's it. You know, I, for me, eleven green, obviously zero waste. We don't waste any food, but that's essentially what it is. Very cool. Very uh, cool. Eleven green, yeah. Man, best of luck. Thank I you. Mean, uh, Thank you. Uh, it's not like you need it, but you know, you're oh, doing yeah. amazing Thank you so yourself. Much, man. Thank you. I absolutely enjoyed this conversation. Me it's too. A, an amazing story. Um, I hope people take what, I mean, even if it's not food, but whatever they want to do, if they want to do that jump, just do the jump. Yeah, I mean, just do it. Obviously you have some savings. So, you know, savings and, and kind of like building up to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like build up to it to the point where you can't ignore it anymore. Yeah. That's key. Build Absolutely. up to it to where it, like, it's just stupid not, not to, to do, do it. it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the point when you're like jump. Yeah. That, that for me is, is it. Absolutely, man. Okay, tell me a special moment um, in your F and B career that you felt was the moment. Um, I mean, I think uh, definitely April thirtieth, mm. uh, twenty twenty-three. Uh, sorry, April thirtieth, twenty twenty-four, around two p.m. was a very special moment. Okay, um, I was walking into 11 green i had the meeting before and all of a sudden i look at my phone it's pinging 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 and i'm getting all these messages from the fmb community there's a group uh industry food industry whatever group that we have i'm getting all these messages saying congratulations sultan congratulations congratulations i'm like what what's going on you know and then i i look and there's somebody who had reposted Two images uh, from His Royal Highness uh, uh, Sheikh Hamdan's uh, uh, Instagram account where he was driving uh, towards uh, 11 Green and then uh, another one where he was holding uh, a bull burger in front of 11 Green from his car with the 11 Green wrapping in it, uh, oh. uh, half eaten. And I mean, my and, 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 and the time was literally like 15 minutes ago. So I, I see that and I'm like, I run out. I'm like, I'm looking at the parking. I'm like, where, where, where is, the car? where is, <laughs> you know, obviously his highness came and went and, and he had the, the bull burger. Um, and it was such a special moment, uh, you know, of like kind of, you know, feeling grateful and a testament to, to what we've accomplished, obviously, I mean, at, at the highest level, it was it was incredible, wow. incredible. I mean, that's even better than getting a Michelin star, to oh be honest. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know what Michelin star feels like, but <laughs> this is just the best thing that could. I feel like in Dubai, that's the highest stamp of approval. It is, you it know, is, like, it you is, know, it is. I mean, it, you know, what, what this city has done done for us in, in terms of our careers, it's kind of like what America used to be in a way. Mm -hmm. I feel like UAE in general, UAE as a whole and, and Dubai has become that right, mm -hmm. and uh, for somebody to kind of switch careers and and develop, you know, do what we did, is just uh, incredible. Yeah. And seeing that, I mean, that was just special. So who, so you or Kinda weren't in th at the restaurant at the time? No, I mean Kinda's uh, in her office in her job. I was in a meeting. I just came, and um, it was a weekday. The team uh, like no, did they recognize no, him? No, no, there it was a, so it was a takeaway. Somebody came in. Oh, uh, took the order and went out, and uh, and then there was a post, and you know, and then obviously That's nuts. what happened wow. after was also super special. We already we were, we are blessed that we have you know lines and you know uh, when we get busy and, and everything, but then it you know it, it got even more. Wow. And, uh, you know, we're very, very grateful and, and blessed to, to have had that moment. Uh, that, that is a wild story. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, is yeah, a wild yeah, story. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for thank your time. You. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you tonight at yeah. 11 Green. Please. If everybody agrees that they want to go there tonight to have burgers. And clap. Clap.